still on an Ed Ed Nettie kick, so I thought I'd rewatch the really bizarre episode and just try to describe it. It's been a long week. If I look tired, it's because I am. There's been a lot going on in terms of events. Anyway, so the episode I rewatched was 1 plus 1 equals Z. It's the really trippy one. Uh, so the setup is, it starts off with Eddie waking up to find Ed in his bed. Ed can't sleep because he's he's thinking of existential questions. Like, oh, uh, really silly stuff. Like, oh, how can my feet smell if they don't have a nose? He keeps asking Eddie these questions, annoying him. Uh, he eats his lava lamp and somehow winds up in the kitchen just asking Eddie all these questions oh, while, while opening and closing the refrigerator. <laughs> Uh, then they go to Double D, who's making, who's taking apart an antique radio to figure out how it works. And Eddie gets it into his head that, oh, if I'm smart enough, I can get really rich and buy a ton of jawbreakers. <laughs> so uh, they, the plan is to just take things apart to figure out how they work and somehow, uh, step two, question mark, step three, profit. So they find this all, all this junk in Ed's house, including a washing machine, a refrigerator, probably a bunch of refrigerators in there <laughs> and a whole desk where there a whole furniture store worth of stuff crammed into this garage uh, where they find a uh, and they don't really find anything there except they take apart the washing machine which they can just lift out of the <laughs> garage because despite noodly limbs they're obscenely strong well at least Ed is uh, so they go so they go to Rolf's so they would go to Rolf's farm Actually, interesting thing as as a kid, I always thought Rolf was German because I've got German heritage, specifically Swiss German. But apparently Rolf is supposed to be Italian-American, at least according to Danny Antonucci, who is himself an Italian-American immigrant. Anyways, uh, going back to the story, the Eds try to figure out how Rolf's chicken coop works. Uh, Rolf pulls a pig out and tells them a story. Then somehow in between this, it... It transitions into the really trippy stuff. Uh, they try to pick up a tree, but then it's flat. And I'm not gonna, I can't remember all the crazy stuff, but they're, they're just messing with the laws of physics and reality in the most creative and absurd of ways. Uh, they, they play with the outlines in the fourth wall. They take, they take Jimmy's outline off so he melts into the sewer. They eat the sun, which turns everything night. Uh, then they, Ed cuts a hole in the in the background of reality, and it the canker it's the canker sisters in a, in a bath all together for some reason. <laughs> they want him to scrub their feet, so he pushes the the hole away. <laughs> oh, then uh, there then there's another portal that comes in, and it works. This is before Portal came out, and it works the same way the game Portal does. Uh, what else? Oh, then they send uh. What the, the whole background starts moving. They end up in Kevin's eye. And what else? Ed blows up a cloud, which <laughs> they all, th all three of them start riding this cloud. Then, it, which, higher and higher till they reach a pencil, which pops the cloud and everything's back to normal. The kids wonder what the heck they're doing. Uh, they piss off Sarah, Ed's sister. Uh, Ed and Eddie, uh, Eddie and Double D fall into a sewer, which Ed picks up. It's which ends up being just this giant pipe. Runs away. Sarah chases him, and that's the end. But it's surprisingly satisfying because <laughs> uh, the visual creativity. I remember this show. This particular episode aired a lot on Cartoon Network, so I remember it. I remembered it very clearly, and I remembered. Mostly how visually creative it was. Uh, I liked all the different ways they could mess with this world. It's a lot of fun. It definitely has a very classic cartoons feel, this particular episode. So I think that's why they ran it a lot. But it's definitely one of the weirder setups. And that's saying a lot because they all have very weird setups. They all end up in very weird places. The laws of this world already defy physics. But that's what makes it fun. That's what I love about animation. You can do anything. I think it'd be fun. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of fun just taking someone's face apart. But not like the Gravity Falls scene. That was terrifying. I mean, just 
rearranging, like, really rearrange, uh, Sarah's face like, a, like a Mr. Potato Head, which is very funny. I feel like, don't you wish you could do that to someone, just take their mouth off with her being annoying? I feel like a lot of people would want that. So, uh, if you can make sense of this episode, you probably remember it, and good job for that.